Journal, the, the uh, paper taking a closer look at activist investors and what impact they have on the companies that they target. The results nearly split whether the company's results improve as a result of the activists. Uh, they measured success based on, based on things like metrics, including earnings, spending, shareholder return. This, of course, coming after Nelson Peltz took on GE and Jeff Amelt, and then, of course, uh, with Ellen Coleman leaving DuPont, we should say that even though the journal, hello, John Hills <laughs> around, even though, the, even though the journal says that it's kind of split, DuPont stock did rise up yeah. after the news that Ellen Coleman was leaving. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a tough debate, though, really. It was, it was a close split, but it, I think it tilted slightly towards the activists. I think uh, that's so. Like 5%, they did a, about 5% of them did better uh, than was the case otherwise. And the other thing that I found very interesting from this study was that what you see is companies, they, they tend to, they don't grow as fast as companies not interrupted by activists, but the returns go up. So the activists are focusing on allocation of capital, using capital more effectively as opposed to growth. Michael, what do you think? Yeah, I'm in the camp that likes activism. Everything's a case-by-case -case basis. What worries me is there's a lot of investors who maybe traditionally were more event-driven investors, more into corporate mergers, um, but don't really have the operating or fundamental experience running companies. That worries me. That's sort of tourism, if you will. Right, of course. But I think there's a lot of experienced operators out there. I think the learning curve is being traversed by these investors, and they are learning how to add value. Like, like John pointed out, out, reallocate capital more wisely. Um, perhaps there are mergers that make sense from a strategic standpoint. And will be accretive. Well, not look just what like Alcoa is doing. Alcoa is splitting in two, right? But they're, yeah. but they're not perfect. That's one of the important Certainly lessons not, here. No. Like, these guys will not come on programs like this, and they'll, you know, they'll speak as if they have all the answers. They mess up almost as often as they get it right. Yeah. Yeah. But sure. net, yeah. net, they do tend to get it I right. I thought I, that I, Nelson Peltz lost initially when, you know, they didn't give him a board seat. In fact, Nelson Peltz won mm -hmm. in the DuPont story. Ellen yep. Coleman is to, stepping down. To be, to be will fair, he win we'll, in the GE case? We'll see if he wins. Uh, you know, with GE, it, it comes down to, does it make more sense for those businesses to be separate? Does it make sense for them to uh, rationalize these businesses? Time will tell. Well, he's already done a huge restructuring dig, and he's selling 50% of the earnings at GE, uh, selling GE Capital. Right. That's uh, maybe why now Nelson, what? Ne now what? Nelson Peltz comes in and says, D ML doesn't need to worry for now. Peltz mm -hmm. is not going to mess with the business for now. Well, right. this raises another interesting question, is how do the executives and boards deal with these activist investors? One of the things that comes out in the story is they're better off engaging with them than fighting with them. Yeah. Well, I think by the way, that's right. seeds in the minds of the board members, though. It, it sows doubt potentially, what? even if they're. By the way, well, though, no one likes to have your decisions. <laughs> Challenge. Of course. Yeah. One point this I is going political. I just wanted to like throw that in. Hillary Clinton is now taking on this as one of her campaign issues. So this is something. Speaking I'm of glad you guys did the story. Well, because Larry, going to be a huge, yeah. huge story that we're going to be following politically. Larry Fink is on the the you know the Clinton team. He's what? a big supporter there, and he has said that the activist story has created short termism mm -hmm. as as a. a Fine. He's, well, he's as talk, opposed to long. -term. You know, with all due respect to Larry, he's talking his book as yeah. well. It's not what he does, so he's going to talk against that. One th one thing on GE though, we we have mentioned is it, this is a cr critical time for GE. Now, in the oil services space, we have Baker Hughes and Halliburton merging. There's a lot of business to be sold. If GE can rationalize, take advantage of those uh, divestitures, it's a good time. It could be a good time for their industrial and oil services businesses. All right, we'll good see. time for that. Cheryl, thank you.